Hey everybody, we wanted to share some of the glimpses that we had during a drive through the Mojave Desert. Now this is officially called the Mojave National Preserve through the National Park Service System. But a lot of people just know this area as the Mojave Desert. And it's easy to drive through from going from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. We had no idea that the Mojave was gonna be on our way from Las Vegas to, in our case, Joshua Tree National Park. So if you're driving from California to Vegas, this is an actually a really good stop, an intriguing way to see something different along the trip. Now there is a huge Joshua Tree forest in the Mojave. And this makes sense because it is very closely located to Joshua Tree National Park as well. One of the most intriguing things we found in the Mojave Desert was this train. And apparently the train tracks are well used. There's always trains coming through this area. And it was really surprising to us. And there's plenty of places along the road where you can actually stop and take some great photos of the trains going through. Uh, that was surprising as well. And it turns out that this area, especially the Mojave Desert, actually was a thriving train community and that goes back to 1862 when the union pacific wanted to kind of get a foothold on trains on the west coast and specifically in california and so part of that was that they set up the kelso depot which you will see in a minute and it's crazy actually this train footage was taken at the kelso depot which is a national park service visitor center area it's really surprising how trains are so integral to the development of the desert area. And what you're seeing here is the Kelso Depot Visitor Center. This is the parking lot where you would arrive and park. There is RV parking and oversized vehicle parking, just so you know about that. And when you come to this visitor center, it is going to feel like an oasis in the middle of the desert, which is exactly what the Kelso Depot was back in the day when the railroad was being built and when it was being utilized to transport things across America and the West Coast. As you can see the green grass and the lush trees, it is not something that you are expecting while driving through the desert. It is such a visual oasis and then it is also a place where you can get water, and refuge and um, this was true for people on trains back in the day and it's true for you now this is one of the few places where you're actually going to be able to get a bathroom break or air conditioning um, maybe some water or food if you need it as you are driving through the Mojave Desert now this depot was actually made to help the trains going through because they were getting ready to start on a steep grade and so they needed to stop here and get what was known as a helper engine. Now let me interrupt that story and just let you know that what you're going to be seeing is a lot of the visual displays that kind of explains the Mojave Desert. All of this is located in the Kelso Depot Center. So you're going to be seeing a lot about the history and the landscape and learning more. There's so many rooms, it's a two floor building. There is so much stuff here to kind of learn more about the desert. But um, this was a place where the trains would get helper engines. And it was also a place where the steam locomotives could actually get water because there was a reliable spring water source nearby. And so around all of that developed a place where there was a restaurant. This is actually where people that were on trains that didn't have a dining car, they actually came here and ate. And that is where the visitor center kind of area where the gift shop is and their park ranger, that's where that is located here. There was a post office, there was an engine house, all of these things eventually developed in Kelso. And there was places where the railroad workers would actually sleep as well. And there is um, a representation of that as you walk through the Kelso Depot Visitor Center as well. Now it was named Kelso because three men put their names in a hat and they drew a name and that name was John Kelso and that's where this 
kind of helper house got its name from. Otherwise, it was just called Siding Number 16 up until then. This library that they have is great for homeschooling and learning more about the area. It is packed with books and also has a ton of old maps that you can look at while you're here. Perfect place to be in the air condition and cooling off. What you do need to know about Kelso Depot is that they were only accepting cash in the gift shop for any water or any types of snacks and merchandise that they had. So that might be something that you want to be sure that you have cash on hand. And also an FYI that they don't have a ton of water and snacks. So if you're trying to get through this Mojave Desert and stay in a while, be sure to bring some of your own snacks and water and everything like that. Now what you do need to know is that we actually came in June and in the middle of the day, and it was super hot, actually had some chocolate in the car and wasn't thinking about it. Obviously it was totally melted by the time we got back. And when you're wanting to walk out on these dunes, which are very famous in the Mojave Desert, be sure that you have appropriate footwear because they are super hot. As you can see, these animal tracks are just amazing. You can find that all around the dunes as well as people's footprints as you can see. We were surprised to find the Kelso Dunes. Honestly, we weren't sure what to expect when we were coming to the Mojave, but the Kelso Dunes apparently are very famous. It is about 45 square miles of dunes and they are just amazing they you can see them on the horizon as you're driving and then when you park in the in the parking areas beside some of the dunes and you start walking and it's like they just become so huge as you're walking towards them now honestly if you do want to walk and explore the dunes i highly suggest you do it early in the morning or late in the evening because as i said the sun was just insanely hot in the middle of the day and you do need proper footwear. If you're doing it when it's super hot, I would not suggest wearing flip-flops out here because the sand is so hot. And as you can see, there's all kinds of prickly like cactus-like plants and all kinds of things living in the sand. So just be prepared for that. There are plenty of hiking opportunities throughout Mojave. We did not do any of them because of the heat. But to enjoy the wildflowers and the wildlife that are along the dunes and along the trails, that's something that you really might want to spend some time and allow some time to explore and enjoy that. So those were the sand dunes that we visited in the Mojave Desert, but there are also lava tubes and cinder cones and all kinds of weird landscapes that are also located in the desert. And you can go hiking, you can go to the lava tube. Um, it is about five miles east of the Kell Baker Road. And it's not something that's maintained by the Park Service, but you certainly can go there. And be sure to get a map while you're at a visitor center because it will tell you how to get to Lava Tube Trail. And it's definitely something interesting to go explore. Also during springtime, the wildflowers in the Mojave are something that you're probably not expecting either. You're not expecting the flowers and the color within the desert. Overall, the Mojave Desert is so intriguing and definitely should be on your list of National Park Service places that you wanna visit in your lifetime. 